This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. Had a nice night betting the NBA last night based on the advice of Brandon Gadula. So let's run it back and talk more NBA for today. This time, we're bringing on Tom Vecchio. You know Tom from talking NFL with us, mostly props, but also doing some betting for us. We're going to talk to Tom about tonight's NBA slate and let you know where there is value on the board at FanDuel Sportsbook. This is covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com. Com. Joined here, as mentioned, by Tom Vecchio. Check him out on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom. Check out all of his prop work over at numberfire.com as well. Doing NBA, NHL, NFL, etc. Tom, happy Wednesday to you. How you doing today? I'm doing good. You know, this is uh, NBA props are super interesting. I think there's there are a lot of things to consider. I think this is this could be a really good discussion when it comes to overall process. Obviously, we can we can apply that on a night to night basis, kind of regardless of what factors are changing. I'm ready to go. You're ready to go. And I realized just now we should probably get you on to talk NHL at some point, too. So uh, uh, just, you know, I mean, that is my favorite. So I'm springing stuff on you with no warning. Uh, I think that's been my specialty since we transitioned to being a daily show. So down the road, maybe next week, we'll talk some NHL with Tom uh, to get his read on the prop markets there and more. So looking forward to that. We're going to dive in and let you know what Tom is seeing for tonight in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Cup covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts. Our wild card weekend first look is up on the covering the spread podcast feed and over on the FanDuel YouTube page. Get that by searching for covering the spread wherever you get your podcasts, hitting subscribe. And then if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well. Ryan Williams with us tomorrow to talk about his favorite NFL beat uh, bets for week or for wild card weekend as well for more NFL discussion and player props coming up on Friday for this weekend. The NFL Saturday Million is now live on FanDuel for Daily Fantasy. Put your NFL knowledge to the test and create your best nine-player roster while staying under the salary cap. Then, using FanDuel's live scoring feature, you can follow along as you compete for your share of $1 million in prizes, with first place taking home $200,000 for just a five dollar entry fee the saturday slate is a whole lot of fun so get your entries in before saturday uh with locks at around 4 30 plenty of big names using your lineups saturday is coming quickly so head to fanduel.com and enter your lineups today eligibility restrictions apply go to fanduel.com or download the fanduel app for more details now tom we had you on to talk about props and talk about the NBA before opening night, but that was several months ago. I have dumped all knowledge in my brain uh, since that time. So I want to go back and talk about that once again. As a refresher, what does your prop betting process look like in the NBA? So NBA is super unique because I, I think for multiple factors, and this is this is probably the longest part like uh, of the questions that we're going to go through of the things that we're going to like this is probably the longest part so it's also the most important part it is so like when we if we talk we think about this from like an nfl perspective or i'll use an example it's like okay when wide receiver a is out we look to the sample size for wide receiver b it's like okay his his target share increases by x amount of like wow he goes from like a 22 percent target share to up to 28 like wow that's awesome like we love seeing that but it's not like he's gonna be seeing every pass number one and it's not like they're gonna be you know passing the ball on every play in the NBA, since there's so much action, like that player that sees that increase in usage, offensive usage, is going to be heavily involved just because of the nature of the sport. So NBA starts with injuries. Like when players, gen, teams generally have two big players, three big players. So when player A, B, or C is out, how does that impact? So offensive usage rate is the thing that I'll refer to, which is a formula. It's about the team's total field goal attempts and the player's total field goal attempts and minutes and all these things. The form is not important, but you can look at the change. So when, you know, when uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo is off the court, we're going to talk about that game later. When he's off the court, who sees the offensive increase in usage for the Bucs? Well, that would be Drew Holiday. That'd be Chris Middleton if he's playing. Bobby Portis would jump in the starting lineup. We can look at specific increases in their usage. And then we also can look at field goal attempts, rebounds, and assists per 36 minutes or per 48 minutes. So it all starts with the injuries of how I'm evaluating what players I want to be targeting. And I would almost say, it's actually easier when teams are dealing with injuries because if everyone's fully healthy, then it's kind of just like whoever has the hot hand that night is just going to be the guy that crushes all his props. 
where on, you know, and then, then if you have the other player kind of left out to dry, where if we know someone is injured, it's not like, like the way I put it is like the range of outcomes is smaller in the NBA right. because if a Tentacumpo is out, it's not like Drew Holiday is going to play 10 minutes and only take two field goal attempts barring an injury. Like if we look at the range of outcomes for a football player, and the example I use is Justin Jefferson, as we saw a couple of weeks ago against the Packers, he did nothing. Right. How we're, I'm we're, aware, Tom. Believe yeah, me, my DFS bankroll is very aware. Wait, how many catches did the end up with? I think he had two for like 35 or two for 15 or something. Right. So he did nothing. But in, in yeah. games when he goes crazy, he has like 30 plus fandu points. And the way we can translate that is like when he tends to compose off the court, Drew Holiday is going to be out there for 35 plus minutes, taking 18 or 20 field goal attempts. He's never going to be out there for 35 minutes, taking two field goal attempts, with one assist and one rebound. That just does not happen. So the range of outcomes in the NBA is smaller. So it creates much more value and props and much more consistency. So now, it starts with the injuries and we have to use that as like a, a really, really hard template going forward because it is very accurate. Now you were talking about the usage rates. I think the other tough part, at least for me, is minutes because minutes will change too based on player availability. Right. Are you looking at projections to decide minutes? You know, what do you lean on for that specific aspect of the analysis? Yeah, so I'll look at projections. We have them number fire. There are, you know, tons of sites across the industry where you can find minutes projections, uh, you know, PRA projections, which I'll get into, the points, rebounds, assist projections. Um, the minutes are, are relatively easy to see. Like once you get into NBA DFS, NBA betting, you can see, when player A, B, or C is out, who jumps in the starting lineup? A player that normally sees 35 minutes may see 38 minutes. Like it, they're pretty easy to understand once you get into the flow for a couple of weeks or a couple of months. Now, I know when we talked, I believe this might have been, I don't know if this is an NHL discussion. We had some discussion and you were talking about, oh, uh, no, it's MLB. You were talking about the value of alternate markets. And if you felt really good about a player, you'd be pretty willing to go in alternate markets because. It's not volatile. And I think of alternate markets when I think of volatility in the positive sense. Are you staying away from, or do you find yourself primarily betting the main markets for NBA? Or do you still like to go to those alternate markets to get better juice, despite the fact that it is not as volatile? It's both. And, and it's it's injury dependent. It's also game environment dependent, where the, the PRA bet, points, rebounds, assist bet, is my favorite in the NBA. It's one of my favorite across all sports. And it's something that you would understand because you always talk about multiple paths to getting yeah, some Correct. You know, rushing plus receiving, all those sorts of things. Where the PRA, that is exactly it. It's points plus rebounds plus assists where the player doesn't need to go out there and drop 40 points. He can have 22 plus 6 plus 7 and all of a sudden he's over. So – I look to alternate markets if they're if I think the game environment will allow it where the players, uh, you know, points prop is sitting at 19 and a half. But I want to take him at 25 plus. I want to take him at 30 plus because the game environment allows it. And he's also in a spot to see increased offensive usage because a player is out. When so, you say game environment, are you alluding to a tight spread or what is that for you in the NBA? So in the NBA, number one thing would be um, uh, offensive pace for teams. Okay. And that is possessions per game where you know teams that essentially if you just think about it logically if a team waits until there's two seconds or three seconds left on the shot clock and then shoots obviously there's going to be fewer possessions it's like a team that runs the ball they're like the bleeding. packers of the nba right they're uh, waiting the to the snap the, the, the shot the the snap clock is down to two right. seconds every time right yeah. but if a team like gets them down the court and they're shooting when there's 18 seconds left on the shot clock there's obviously just gonna be x amount more possessions so game environment would be high over unders and close spreads ideally Mm -hmm. Obviously, high over unders is still great because even if a team, even if a team is like the Suns are thirteen point dogs tonight, but they're also very very uh, hit by injuries, so their players still have value. Like someone like Mikael Bridges had a big game last night. Like he's still going to need to play thirty. He played forty minutes last night. Like he could still play thirty eight minutes tonight just because they're short handed. Doesn't matter if they get blown out because they need him out there. Right. Because right. Chris Paul is out. Devin Booker's out. DeAndre Ayton didn't play last night. Campaign is out. Kim Johnson is out like they are just so shorthanded that he needs to play 38 minutes. So regardless if they're down by 15 or 20, he's still going to be out there. So I like high over unders, close spreads, and ideally teams that play in the top 15 of the league when it comes to offensive pace. For example, last night, the Clippers and the Mavericks played. Those two teams are in the bottom seven of the league in offensive pace. Last night was a slate low 221 over under, and I think it ended with 214 points. So Luka didn't have a huge game because – 
the Clippers are good on defense. The Mavs are good on defense. Like this is a, a playoff type environment where they, they play slow and there's not a whole lot of back and forth action. Yeah, I think that the important part there is you are using other markets to decide how you want to bet props. Absolutely. And I think that that is a key thing. If you're new to betting NBA props, you can lean on other data to tell you how to bet things. Now, I do want to talk about that as well. Are you primarily a prop better when it comes to the NBA? Or are you betting sides, totals, stuff like that as well? It, it's primarily props. I'm okay with sides every now and then. I, I like to take good teams that are... Coming off of a couple losses, I expect them to rebound. Uh, you know, you look to like their offensive uh, efficiency numbers, deep, mm -hmm. defensive efficiency numbers, and if they are struggling, you know, I look to them. Uh, you know, to to you know find uh, you know at, well, what am I regression to the mean is the, the phrase I'm looking for. Uh, if they have some couple off nights, uh, I think totals are extremely tough to bet in the NBA. I think they're one of the toughest markets in all of sports. And I guess the same example from last night is like the the Mavs Clippers, like. Super low scoring game for NBA standards at two, I think it was 214 or 215 total points. But like if if the game goes to overtime, that game's going over. If the players like wake up on the right side of the bed and have their favorite pregame meal and everyone comes out hitting every shot, then like the game is gonna cruise over. But and and if the opposite side, if we have the two worst defenses going up against each other and the teams come out and no one can hit a shot, then the game's a dead under, regardless of how bad these teams are on defense. So I think totals are extremely tough to bet in the NBA. So it's only sides for me. And it's specifically good teams coming off of losses in a spot to rebound. Okay, well, let's uh, spin that all forward then and talk about tonight's slate because we do have a couple of uh, a couple of nationally televised games. We've got the Bucks and the Hawks and the Suns at the Nuggets. The Suns spoiling Steph Curry's return last night and winning that game handedly, despite, like you said, a lot of injuries in that game. So if we're if people want to get action on those games that they may be watching for tonight, any bets standing out for you in either of those? Yeah, so one of them would be the one of them would prop market would be, of course, be Brooke Lopez over six and a half rebounds. That's sitting at minus 128. Um, it, you know, if people have been following the NBA, like Brooke Lopez is having a really solid year. Uh, he's been over this number in a lot of recent games. He's also going over in a big capacity in a lot of these recent games 10, uh, you know, 12, 14 high rebounding games. We are dealing with, what is it, a, a two-point spread for this game, two-and-a-half-point spread at 236 over-under. Both teams are in the top half league of offensive pace. So, like, we're kind of checking a lot of boxes here, which I, of course, love to see. Um, we also see the Hawks. They're missing Clint Capella, who's their, their starting center, one you know, a great rebounder, which means they'll have Anyeka Kangu starting at center. And, frankly, I think Brooke Lopez is pretty good. Already we see Atlanta allowing – what is this, the, the eighth most or the seventh most rebounds per game in opposing centers, and they're missing their starting center. Mm -hmm. So, like, we're, we're checking boxes here where he's been consistent, high pace game, high over under, and there's a positive injury for their favor from the opposing team. So that would be number one. And then number two would be Trey Young under eight and a half assists, uh, which is sitting – oh, this has – okay, this has jumped up now, just changed from eight and a half to nine and a half. So maybe now this is not the spot that I like. It was eight and a half 10 minutes ago before we hopped on here. It's now up to nine and a half. It's now under nine and a half and minus 142, which I don't, in theory, I still love. I don't love the juice though. Right. And you also don't like the fact the market moved the other way. Right. right. That's, that's an important thing. You know, you're recognizing that the market disagrees. It is minus 142 on the under right now for Trey Young, um, which is a lot. Um, but I think that kind of using the market as an indicator of, oh, okay, maybe this one continues to rise, potentially waiting it out and seeing if you do see more movement that direction, that could be an indicator of whether you want to invest later on. Right. So that, that, that changes things. Um, I would, I would consider going to Drew Holiday points plus assists is sitting at 26 and a half. Mm-hmm. It's minus 120 on the over. If this number changes, if I could get it to 25 and a half, that would be a little bit more favorable. It, it's obviously not a, a huge difference in any capacity, but there's still no Chris Middleton for the Bucs. Um, they kind of need a big a big rebound game. The Bucs have been a little bit inconsistent, especially their defense. So I expect a, a whole ton of minutes for Holiday. Everyone's going to be looking to attend Kumpo, but his numbers are – obviously massive 51 and a half is his PRA number, which is, listen, he can get there on points alone in theory. Sure. 
Um, especially with, I mean, some of these games he put up like a week and a half ago. He's had yeah, like a streak of where he's put up 20 in each half for like he's, he's a couple of games in <laughs> 20 games for 40 points and 20 rebounds. So he could do, I mean, it's what, and I will say this when it comes to Tenda Kumpo, when it comes to Luca, uh, LeBron, Durant, some of these Embiid, Jokic, my, my policy on them, as I've said this to, uh, Ben Stevens, you know, when I go on uh, sports grid and uh, talking to him about a half an hour. So I'll talk to Ben um, about a half an hour. My, my policy on them is very simple. I take the over or I stay away. Right. I do not take unders on these players. I'm not going to sit there and sweat a, a Tentacumpo who can get to a triple double by halftime. It can be a, it can be a good value on the under, but that doesn't mean you want to put yourself through that. Right. Like, so and I, that's, I, that's OK to sit it out. If you if you don't want to deal with that stress, that's fine. As we've said before, the best bet sometimes is not making one. So I right. bet the over or I just don't bet it at all because I'm not going to sit there and then check the box where an attempt Goomba goes for 40, 20 and 10. Right. Right. Exactly. So that's the Milwaukee uh, versus Atlanta game. The Denver versus Phoenix game, uh, not a lot posted, given that the Suns have a ton of injuries and just played last night. Anything for you in that one? Anything you'll be looking at once prop markets do open, or is it all too up in the air for us to have a, a major discussion there right now? It's it's up in the air, but I think it's clear. If Mikhail Bridges is playing, I think he has some value again, depending on where that line is, because he did have a big night last night. DeAndre Ayton, the Suns starting center, was listed as questionable last night. In theory, there's a chance that he plays tonight just because he, you know, he was questionable going into last night, et cetera, et cetera. I think there hypothetically could be some value on Jokic unders. And I kind of explained this on the Daily ISO, what which is, you know, our, our DFS podcast, which is why I'm I'm kind of lukewarm to not excited about Jokic tonight because going into altitude at Denver, they've defended home court very well this season and over the previous seasons. Uh, they're already shorthanded, Phoenix, this is, and they're on the second night of a back-to-back. So I literally don't think Jokic may need to play 38 minutes. I think there's some real blowout potential in this game. Right. So he can, he may not have to play at all in the fourth quarter is the point that I, I uh, essentially make, where I'd be interested in unders on him, in theory, depending on who's available for the Suns, because if they can't keep this game close, this, the, the Nuggets could run away with this game by 20 points. Right, exactly. So that it's a it's a very very touchy market tonight because of the Suns and their lack of health. Right. So if they're healthier, that may push you away from the Jokic unders. If they are less healthy, then that could be the spot to dive in there. Right. Okay. We got a lot of other games on the Wednesday slate though. So what other numbers do you see right now that you like, or which other situations are you keeping an eye on for once props are eventually posted there? So the number one situation I'm keeping my eye on would be with the Bulls. Uh, going up against the Washington Wizards. It's a one-point spread. It's a 230 over-under. Both great things. DeMar DeRozan, the Bulls' best player, left their most recent game with a quad issue. Zach Levine is their second-best player. He's been on fire as of late, um, and he sees an increase in usage when DeMar DeRozan's off the court. We also see uh, Nikola Vucevic, their starting center, being productive. This is also a phenomenally easy matchup for him going up against Washington. Bradley Beal is out uh, for Washington. Uh, Daniel Gafford and Kristaps Porzingis are both listed as questionable. So if they are out for Washington, this is going to be a very, very easy path for Vucevic because he's going to be playing against backups and DeMar DeRozan being out. So we have a close spread, a high over-under, an injury situation on both sides, which could point to massive production for Vucevic and Zach Levine. So this is absolutely a game I have my eye on. It's like every night it's like, Injuries, game environment, how many of these boxes can we check? Mm-hmm. And do the lines make sense? Do the projections support it? Am I going crazy? Like, how many of these things <laughs> are accurate on a night to night basis? Yeah, if you can get something that checks every box, you know, why not? Dive right. on in. So we're keeping an eye on the Bulls, uh, keeping an eye on DeMar DeRozan's availability. If he can't go, Vucevic seems in line to benefit, potentially Zach Levine as well. Any other things you're seeing right now on the board? Uh, for some reason, Knicks props aren't posted. They're props posted for the Indiana Pacers, but none for the Knicks, which is there. I don't think the Knicks are dealing with too many injuries or any at all. I guess RJ Barrett. Um, but Julius Randle for the Knicks is stepping out and taking a lot of threes lately which is uh, always a spot to look. You get four in the fourth quarter alone in one of their games against uh, the Toronto Raptors recently. So I am absolutely interested in that. And then finally, it would be Domitus Sabonis for the Sacramento Kings going up against the Houston Rockets. Uh, Like Sabonis, over 34.5 points plus rebounds, sitting at minus 108. 
Uh, Houston Rockets, not particularly known for their defense in some of these recent years. Uh, the Kings are a great offensive uh, team in terms of offensive efficiency. Uh, Sabonis should be an all-star. He may not officially be an all-star, but he's having a phenomenal year. High over under. It does have a was a nine and a half point spread for this game, eight and a half points, nine and a half points, but a two thirty seven over under. Um, and in theory, if they're going to be getting to that nine point spread, Sabonis will be very involved. Okay, so Sabonis, the number there for you was thirty four and a half points plus rebounds. That was minus one away over at FanDuel Sportsbook uh, for that late night game between the Kings and the Rockets. That is Tom Vecchio. Make sure you check him out on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom. We'll be having Tom on to talk some NHL. Uh, you know, I'm volunteering you for that in the very near future to break down that. We'll talk more NBA with him as well. A lot of Tom coming up here on the show, and I'm very excited about that. Tom, good luck to tonight in the NBA, and we'll talk to you once again here soon. Yeah, thanks for having me. As mentioned, check out Tom's work, his prop work over at numberfire.com. Find him on Twitter at DFS underscore Tom. He mentioned his DFS podcast as well. The Daily ISO, which is over on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. I am on Twitter at Jim Sanes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Back tomorrow to break down Wild Card Weekend with Ryan Williams. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 